All right, um, one of our writers is pretty, uh, her, her father is a composer, so some of these are like oh, kind cool. of super specific. Um, obviously, this is Barry McCreary. He's one of the composers for, Out, or the composer for Outlander, as well as many others. Um, Bear, in an NPR story, you said Elmer Bernstein was a huge mentor for you, but who is your favorite composer still living? Ooh, my favorite composer still living. <laughs> Wow, you start start me off with it. You stumped me right on the first question. Um, it's hard to say, you know. I um, probably Ennio Morricone is my favorite composer still living. I love that I can still say that. Yeah. You know, and ten years, I don't know that I'll be able to. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he's so inventive, and and still seeing him be so relevant on the pop culture scene. Um, doing Hateful Eight. I yeah. just thought that was so cool. Um, Fighting got, got the Oscar. Yeah, totally. Like, uh, he got the Oscar that he was robbed of in the 80s. <laughs> so I thought that was great. That was really inspiring. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite mode to incorporate into your scores? Oh, wow. My favorite mode? Yeah. Wow, you guys. This is crazy. <laughs> my favorite mode. Uh, I like Dorian mode. Okay. The person who wrote that question knows what that means. <laughs> okay, I'm not even going to I'm not even going to elaborate. If you're going to ask that question, you're just going to get that answer. Okay? If Amanda was here, she would be There you go, yeah, Amanda. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, there is a ton of overlap in scoring between Outlander and Black Sails. In one of the eps, ep episodes of Black Sails, you incorporated an accordion and rendition of Skyboat Song. How <laughs> How do you build in melodic differences to keep the two scores so similar in tone and time frame and different and unique? Well, uh, interestingly, I started off Black Sails by doing a lot of research into pirate sea shanties, many of which were drawn from Celtic folk songs. So the Sky Boat Song was just one of dozens of pieces that I recorded um, just for research and yeah. just to kind of start figuring out where this music of pirate culture in 1715, where it was coming from. Then I got hired on Outlander, and uh, actually I had already put that piece into Black Sails when when producer Ron Moore said, "I really love this Sky Boat song. Let's do that." So it was actually a total it was a total coincidence that it ended up in both shows. However, the, the reason it was a total coincidence is because pirate culture of that time period was drawing from a lot of the same music that I would draw from to score Outlander. Um, keeping the shows different was was easy because they take place in relatively they take place in the same century, uh -huh. but culturally very different worlds. Yeah. Um, that may change in the future. Uh, so I don't not, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I'm going to have to do something, but I'll figure it out when I get there. Yeah. Um, I, since you kind of mentioned that already, like how are, are, how are you going to plan to Americanize the... It's too it's early to know. It's very Scottish now. I know. I know. Too early. It's too early to know. I, I, I will say that the Scottish influence in the music has come to represent the characters. Yes. In the same way that you still heard Scottish folk tunes and instrumentation and modes and melodies when we were in Paris. We realized we couldn't just completely switch over to a Baroque Parisian sound. Um, and I imagine the same thing will apply as we get into the Americas and other places. That, yeah. You know, we, we've associated certain sounds with our characters and we have to be true to that. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite film score of all time? Uh, my, if I had to pick one, it might be To Kill a Mockingbird by Elmer Bernstein. The reason, it's not necessarily the one I, I listen to in my car all the time, yeah. but the reason I would pick it is that it's so timeless. It's actually, I think, the oldest score you can find in film music history that when you listen to it, you would think it was written today. Anything written before that, you could identify as like, oh, it sounds like a 50s yeah. score. And that score is from 1960, and it is so contemporary and elegant and modern that I think that it, I just admire that. I, I think that that took such 
skill and craft yeah. that it takes the top spot for me. I want to ask, like, how did you fall into doing like TV and film scores? I mean, you went to school for ob this, obviously, but I mean, was it just chance or no, who you were no, associated no, no, no. with? Or no, it's all I ever wanted to do. It's what I wanted to do when I was five. Wow. So I started writing music in a pathetic attempt when I was eight. You know, <laughs> and I wrote music all the time. It's all I ever wanted to do. Film scores were my passion when I was a kid. So it was an inevitability that I would, I think, dedicate my life to it and perhaps some lucky chance that I ended up getting paid to do it. Yeah. I mean, dream come true, basically. Indeed. Literally a dream. <laughs> I mean, are you looking forward to doing more films or do you like doing TV? I like working in any medium that has a story to tell. Okay. So I, I love film, I love television, I love video games. Uh, it, it, to me, it's all about telling a story. And, and when you're working with people that have an exciting story to tell and they want you to use music to help tell that story, I, I'm in. Yeah. What is the favorite, most favorite score that you've done? Most proud of? I, I, it's impossible. To it's impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> I, like I, choosing your favorite child. It is. It's a Sophie's <laughs> choice. I, I move on so quickly. I'm, I am so wrapped up in whatever I'm working on at the moment. And then as soon as it's done, I, I don't sort of bask in any pride that I finished it. It's just, I move on to the next thing, yeah. you know? So, I don't know. My favorite thing is usually the thing I'm working on now or next. Okay. You know? Um, what was Ron's reaction when you wanted to make the first half of the second season kind of Frenchified with the, with the opening credits? Uh, it was sort of, you know, it was so, it was such an organic idea. I honestly don't remember if it was Ron's idea or mine. It was just something we knew we would have to do. Um, so it wasn't something that I needed to like pitch him, um, but instead it was something that we knew right away needed to happen. And the only question was, how much would it change? What parts of it would change? The visual language was changing a little bit, so we needed to be true to that. Yeah. Um, but it was clear from the beginning that we needed to change something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love the score in episode one and and the, the 13th one of the second season, just the ah, sweeping out, it gives me chills. Like, oh, yeah. um, oh. well, specifically, who, what choral group did you use for like the, the ghostly elements in the last, in last the episode? In the group, I was using uh, a choir in Prague. Oh, wow. Uh, that I've worked with a lot. Um, just fantastic female singers uh, that I thought would add a otherworldly quality. Mm -hmm. I've used a lot of solo voice in the show, and then in the ninth episode, I used a male choir, like kind of a, a bunch of burly Gaelic singers mm -hmm. to represent the military aspect. Uh, but I had never used a female choir. And when I saw the finale, I I knew I wanted to do something that would take it to another place. And I thought that would do it. All right. Great. Um, I guess, I mean, good board. Um, I mean, what do we have to look forward to in season three? I mean, are you, obviously you're excited because you get to do another season. Indeed. Two seasons. We get to do two more seasons. Uh, it's too early for me to even speculate. I mean, I, I, my job doesn't begin until I look at an episode cut together. You know? Oh, wow. So, so it's not even... I am eagerly awaiting getting started and seeing what, what Ron and the cast and the other writers have come up with um, or are coming up with as we speak. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's going to be special. I mean, clearly material is strong and everybody involved everybody involved is so passionate about it yeah. that uh, I know it'll be really special I mean uh, it's kind of unique I mean not every television show has a score that comes out on CD that you can buy yeah. I mean how has the response from the fans that you actually get their hands on this music it's been great and uh, it's wonderful knowing that the fans have embraced the music as a, I think a, an essential part of the show they love yeah. so much I I take that responsibility seriously. I try yeah. to make sure every cue and every episode, every scene is rewarding if you listen to it. There's yeah. something there to listen to, really, and something there to respond to emotionally. And Raya, but, Raya being yeah, part of the theme, that, like, great. oh. That's wonderful. <laughs> you know? So I'm excited that there's going to be another album for the second season, and I actually think it's maybe my best record ever. I mean, it's wow. such a great... Um, it's almost like two records put together. You have half of it is all this Parisian yeah. music, and the other half is this 
really epic uh, Scottish music and music of the Jacobite Uprising. So uh, it's definitely the most diverse record I've ever done. Um, and I'm excited that, uh, that we're getting to take it out there. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, Bear. Awesome, Bear. thanks so much. <laughs> thank you.